6.2 Metabolic Reactions and Energy Transformations Metabolism is sum of all the chemical reactions that occur in a cell. Reactants are substances that participate in a reaction, while products are substances that form as a result of a reaction. In the reaction A plus B yields C plus D, A and B are the reactants while C and D are the products. How would you know that this reaction will occur spontaneously, that is, without an input of energy? Well, using the concept of entropy, it is possible to state that a reaction will occur spontaneously if it increases the entropy of the universe. But in cell biology, we do not usually wish to consider the entire universe. We simply want to consider this reaction. In such instances, cell biologists use the concept of free energy instead of entropy. Free energy is the amount of energy available, that is, energy that is still free to do work, after a chemical reaction has occurred. The change in free energy after a reaction occurs is calculated by subtracting the free energy content of the reactants from that of the products. A negative result means that the products have less free energy than the reactants, and the reaction will occur spontaneously. In our reaction, if C and D have less free energy than A and B, then the reaction will go. Exergonic reactions are spontaneous and release energy, while endergonic reactions require an input of energy to occur in the body. Many reactions, such as protein synthesis, nerve conduction, or muscle contraction are endergonic. And they occur because exergonic reactions, which release energy, can be used to drive endergonic reactions, which require energy. ATP is a carrier of energy between exergonic and endergonic reactions. ATP, energy for cells. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the common energy currency of cells. When cells require energy, they spend ATP. A sedentary oak tree, as well as a flying bat, requires a vast amount of ATP. The more active the organism, the greater the demand for ATP. However, the amount on hand at any one moment is minimal because ATP is constantly being generated from ADP, adenosine diphosphate and a molecule of inorganic phosphate, P. A cell is assured a supply of ATP because glucose breakdown during cellular respiration provides the energy for the buildup of ATP in mitochondria. Only 39% of the free energy of glucose is transformed to ATP. The rest is lost as heat. There are many biological advantages to the use of ATP as an energy carrier in living systems. ATP provides a common and universal energy currency because it can be used in many different types of reactions. Also, when ATP is converted to energy, ADP and P, the amount of energy released, is sufficient for a particular biological function, and there is little waste of energy. In addition, ATP breakdown can be coupled to endergonic reactions in such a way that it minimizes energy loss. The structure of ATP. ATP is a nucleotide composed of the nitrogen-containing base adenine and the 5-carbon sugar ribose, together called adenosine, and three phosphate groups. ATP is called a high-energy compound because a phosphate group can be easily removed. Under cellular conditions, the amount of energy released when ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP plus P is about 7.3 kilocalories per molecule. The ATP cycle. In cells, ATP carries energy between exergonic reactions and endergonic reactions. When a phosphate group is removed by hydrolysis, ATP releases the appropriate amount of energy for most metabolic reactions. In order to produce light, a firefly breaks down ATP. In this figure, adenosine triphosphate shows 
the nitrogen group adenine, the sugar, and three phosphate molecules. Energy from an endergonic reaction, like protein synthesis, nerve conduction, or muscle contraction, releases one of the phosphate molecules. Energy is least released when the phosphate molecule is hydrolyzed. Energy from an exergonic reaction, such as cellular respiration, can add a phosphate molecule back onto the ADP molecule to make ATP again. Coupled reactions. How can the energy released by ATP hydrolysis be transferred to a reaction that requires energy and therefore would not ordinarily occur? In other words, how does ATP act as a carrier of chemical energy? The answer is that ATP breakdown is coupled to the energy requiring reaction. Couple reactions are reactions that occur in the same place at the same time and in such a way that an energy releasing exergonic reaction drives an energy requiring endergonic reaction. Usually the energy releasing reaction is the hydrolysis of ATP because the cleavage of ATP's phosphate groups releases more energy than the amount consumed by the energy requiring reaction. Entropy will increase and both reactions will proceed. The simplest way to represent a coupled reaction is like this. C plus D coupled with ATP yields ADP and phosphate producing A plus B. This reaction tells you that coupling occurs, but it does not show how coupling is achieved. A cell has two main ways to couple ATP hydrolysis to an energy requiring reaction. ATP is used to energize a reactant or ATP is used to change the shape of a reactant. Both can be achieved by transferring a phosphate group to the reactant so that the product is phosphorylated. For example, when an ion moves across the plasma membrane of a cell, ATP is hydrolyzed and instead of the last phosphate group floating away, an enzyme attaches it to a carrier protein. This causes the protein to undergo a change in shape and allows it to move the ion into or out of the cell. As a contrasting example, when a polypeptide is synthesized at a ribosome, an enzyme transfers a phosphate group from ATP to each amino acid in turn, and this transfer supplies the energy that allows an amino acid to bond with another amino acid. Figure 6-4 shows how ATP hydrolysis provides the necessary energy for muscle contraction. During muscle contraction, myosin filaments pull actin filaments to the center of the cell, and the muscle shortens. The myosin head combines with ATP, three connected green triangles, and takes on its resting shape. ATP breaks down to ADP, two connected green triangles, plus a phosphate group, one green triangle. Now a change in shape allows myosin to attach to actin. The release of ADP and phosphate from the myosin head causes it to change shape again and pull on the actin filament. The cycle begins again at 1 when myosin head continues or combines with ATP and takes on its resting shape. During this cycle, chemical energy has been transformed to mechanical energy and entropy has increased. Through coupled reactions, ATP drives forward energetically unfavorable processes that must occur to create the high degree of order essential for life. Macromolecules must be made and organized to form cells and tissues. The internal composition of the cell and the organism must be maintained, and movement of cellular organelles and the organism must occur if life is content to continue. Explain why ATP is a good short-term energy storage molecule, and briefly explain the function of ATP in coupled reactions. Again, here's a look at that diagram of how muscle contractions occur. Myosin head assumes its resting shape when it combines with ATP. So the myosin is shown here with a triangle on it with ATP. As the ATP is split into ADP and a phosphate, myosin head attaches to actin. The myosin head pulls on actin as the ADP and P are released. 
and this shortens the muscle, creating a muscle contraction.